Hello, just a reminder, if you enjoy my stories, please do give a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thank you. Hello and welcome. Today I have a story from a collection of works called Classic Tales. The story is The Open Road, which was originally written by Kenneth Graham and adapted by Rosie McCormick. I hope you enjoy the story. The Open Road, Part 1, by Kenneth Graham and Rosie McCormick. Won't you take me to call on Toad, said Mole to his friend Rat. I've heard so much about him. Why, of course, said Rat. Get the boat out, and we'll paddle up there at once. It's never the wrong time to call on Toad. Early or late, he's always the same fellow, always good-tempered, always glad to see you, and always sorry when you go. He must be a very nice animal, said Mole, as he got into the boat. He is indeed the best of animals, replied Rat, so simple and so friendly. Perhaps he's not very clever. We can't all be smart. It may be that he is both boastful and conceited, but Toady is a great friend. Rounding a bend in the river, they came in sight of a handsome, dignified old house. It was faded red brick with well-kept lawns reaching down to the water's edge. There's Toad Hall, said Rat. See that creek on the left? That leads to Toad's boathouse. That's where we'll leave the boat. The stables are over there. That's the banquet hall you're looking at now. Very old, that is. Toad is rather rich, you know. This is really one of the nicest houses around, though we never admit as much to Toad. They glided up the creek and passed into the shadow of a large boathouse. There they saw many large boats. Some were slung from the cross beams, some were hauled up on a slip. But none of them were in the water. The place seemed deserted. Rat looked around. I see how it is, he said. Boating is old news. Toad is tired of it and done with it. I wonder what new fad he has taken up now. Come along and let's go see. We shall hear all about it soon enough. They stepped out of the boat and walked across the flower-decked lawn. They found Toad resting in a wicker garden chair. He had large map spread out on his knees. Hooray, he cried, jumping up upon seeing them. This is splendid. He shook the paws of both of them warmly, never waiting for an introduction to Mole. How kind of you, he went on, dancing round them. I was just going to send a boat down the river for you, Ratty, with strict orders that you were to come here at once, whatever you were doing. You don't know how lucky it is you're turning up just now. What a delightful house you have, said Mole. Finest house on the whole river, cried Toad proudly, or anywhere else for that matter. He could not help adding. THE OPEN ROAD PART TWO Now then, Toad said, you fellows must help me. It's most important. You want us to help you with your boating, asked Rat? Oh, poo boating, said Toad in great disgust. A silly boyish amusement. I gave that up long ago. A waste of time, that's what it is. It makes me very sorry to see you fellows, who ought to know better, spending all of your time thinking about boating. No, I've discovered the real thing, the best occupation for a lifetime. I plan to spend the rest of my life on it, and can only wish I hadn't spent so many years boating. Come with me, dear Ratty, and your dear friend also. Come with me just as far as the stable yard, and you shall see what you shall see. Toad led the way to the stable yard. Rat followed with a most unhappy look on his face. There, for all to see, was a travel wagon shining with newness. It was painted yellow and green. There you are, cried Toad. There's real life for you in that travel wagon. 
the open road, the dusty highway, camps, villages, towns, cities. Here today, up and off to somewhere else tomorrow. Travel, new places to see. Fun. The whole world before you, a horizon that's always changing. Mind you, this is the very finest wagon of its sort that was ever made. Come and look at the inside. Planned all of it myself, I did. Mole followed Toad eagerly up the steps and into the wagon. Rat did not move. He only snorted and put his hands deep into his pockets. The wagon had little sleeping bunks and a table that folded up against the wall. It had a cooking stove, lockers, and bookshelves. It had a bird cage with a bird in it. It had pots, pans, jugs, and kettles of every size. All complete, said Toad happily. You'll find that nothing, whatever, has been forgotten. When we make our start this afternoon. I beg your pardon, said Rat. But did I hear you say something about we and starting and this afternoon? Yes, yes, begged Toad. You've got to come. I can't possibly go without you. So please don't argue. It's the one thing I can't stand. You surely don't mean to stick to your dull old river all your life and just live in a hole in a bank and go boating. I want to show you the world. I don't care, said Rat doggedly. I'm not coming, and that's that. I'm going to stick to my old river and live in a hole and go boating, as I've always done. What's more, Mole's going to stick with me and do as I do. Aren't you, Mole? Of course I am, said Mole loyally. I'll always stick with you, Rat. What you say has got to be. All the same, it sounds as if it might have been, well, rather fun, you know, he added wistfully. Poor Mole, the life adventurous was a new thing to him, and so thrilling. It was all so tempting, he had fallen in love at first sight with the yellow-colored wagon. But Rat saw what was passing in Mole's mind, and began to change his mind. He hated disappointing people, and he very much liked Mole. Toad was watching both of them closely. "'Come in and have some lunch,' he said. "'We'll talk it over. "'We don't need to decide anything in a hurry. "'Of course, I don't really care. "'I only want you fellows to have fun. "'Live for others. "'That's my motto in life.'" The Open Road, Part 3 Lunch was wonderful, as everything at Toad Hall always was. During the meal, Toad spoke to Mole. He played inexperienced Mole like one would play a harp. He described what would happen on a trip and the joys of the open road in a glowing way. Mole could hardly sit still in his chair because he was so excited. In the end, Rat allowed Toad and Mole to change his mind. He could not disappoint his friends. So after lunch, they loaded up the wagon and set off. It was a golden afternoon. The smell of the dust they kicked up was rich and satisfying. Out of thick orchards, on either side of the road, birds whistled to them cheerily. Travelers called out, Good day, or stopped to say nice things about the beautiful wagon. Ah, said Toad, kicking out his legs, this is r the real life for a gentleman. They had a pleasant journey along the narrow roads. It was not until the afternoon that they reached the highway. There, disaster sprang out on them. They were strolling along the highway when they saw a small cloud of dust. It seemed to be coming at them fast. From out the dust they heard a toot-toot that sounded like an animal in pain. They turned to continue talking, but in an instant everything changed. With a blast of wind and a whirl of sound that made them jump for the nearest ditch, it was on them. The horn of the motor car rang out. Toot, toot! They had a quick look in an interior of glittering glass and leather. Then the magnificent motor car flung a cloud of dust that blinded them and dwindled to a speck in the distance. The old gray horse and the wagon lurched forward. 
Then there was an awful crash. The yellow-colored wagon, their beautiful wagon, fell over onto its side in the ditch. Rat danced up and down in the road. You villains, he shouted, shaking both fists. You scoundrels! You, you road hogs! I'll call the police on you. I'll report you. The Open Road, Part 4 Where was Toad? He was sitting in the middle of the dusty road and staring in the direction of the disappearing motor car. He went into a sort of trance. His face looked calm, and he murmured, Toot, toot! Rat shook him by the shoulder, but Toad did not budge. What a beautiful sight, Toad murmured. That is the real way to travel, the only way to travel. <gasps> oh my, oh my, I must get one. Mole tapped the rat on the shoulder, but Toad went on. To think I never knew, he said. All those wasted years that lie behind me, I never knew, I never even dreamed of it. But now, now that I know, oh, what fun awaits me. What dust clouds shall form behind me as I speed on my way. What wagons I shall fling carelessly into the ditch. Those awful little wagons, common wagons, yellow-colored wagons. What should we do with him? asked Mole. There is nothing to be done said Rat. He is mad. He has got a new craze. It is always like this in the first stage. He'll go on like that for days now, walking in a happy dream, not able to do anything useful. Never mind him. Let's go and see what can be done about the wagon. They inspected the wagon and found that it would no longer travel. One wheel had broken into bits. Come on, said Rat, we'll have to walk. It's five or six miles to the nearest town. The sooner we get started, the better. But what about Toad? asked Mole. We can't leave him here, sitting in the middle of the road by himself. It's not safe. What if another thing were to come along? Never mind him, said Rat. I'm done with him. They had not gone very far, however, when there were footsteps behind them. Toad caught up with them and put a paw inside the elbow of each of them. Now look here, Toad, said Rat sharply. As soon as we get to town, you'll have to go straight to the police station. You must see if they know anything about that motor car. You must find out who it belongs to. You must complain because your wagon is broken. Then you'll have to go to a blacksmith so he can fix the wagon. Meanwhile, Mole and I will find rooms where we can stay until the wagon is ready. Police station? Complain? murmured Toad dreamily. Why on earth would I complain about that beautiful motor car? I am done with wagons forever. I never want to see the wagon again or hear of it. Oh, ratty! The animals spent the night. The next day, Rat and Mole made their way back to the river bank. A few days later, Mole was sitting on the bank, fishing, when Rat strolled up. "'Have you heard the news?' Rat asked. "'Everyone's talking about it. Toad went to town on the train this morning. He has ordered a large and very expensive motor car.'" And that's the end of our story. I hope you enjoyed it. Come back soon. And we'll have another story. Bye-bye.